Hey, Julian Kraus here, and today we are going to have a look at the Steinberg UR22 Mark II audio interface. If you are in the market for an audio interface and you look around the, the internet, it is probably one of the first interfaces that you come across. So let's see if that thing can really live up to its name. As always, we'll have a closer look at the outside and build quality first, and then dive deeper into the specifications, and I will share the measurement results of this interface with you. The second I held the UR22 in hand, I was surprised by its weight. It comes in at about 1 kilogram, and the whole interface really feels like a small brick. The reason for the weight is the housing. It is made completely out of thick metal and feels very sturdy. All the knobs are nicely damped and operate smoothly. The only thing that I didn't like about the outside of the device is that these three knobs are very close to each other and that makes turning them a little bit finicky. Still overall I would say that the UR22 has a very nice build quality and is built like a tank. Ok, let's take a closer look at the front of the device. You can find two XLR and TRS combo inputs. To the left and to the right you got the corresponding gain knobs. Above the inputs you got two peak LEDs, which light up when the signal is clipping. Another LED, which is signaling whether the 48V phantom power is turned on or off. And one more LED, which lights up when you plug in the interface into a PC. Further to the right you got a button with which you can change the TRS input on channel 2 from a line to a high Z instrument input. Next to that you got a quarter inch headphone jack with the corresponding volume knob above it. You have one more knob which lets you choose whether you only hear the direct monitoring signal without any latency or the audio signal from your door. And you can even set this knob somewhere in the middle to get a mix of your direct signal and your DAW's audio. Lastly, you got one more knob which controls the volume of the outputs on the back. And these are the outputs I'm talking about. They are quarter inch TRS connectors. Above them you can find a switch to enable or disable phantom power for the mic inputs. Next to that there is a MIDI input and MIDI output. Further to the left you can find the USB type B connector for hooking up the interface to a PC, and you can also find a micro USB connector right next to that. This can be used to power the interface with an external power supply, so you can even use this interface with devices that do not deliver enough power over the USB data connection. And you got a switch which lets you toggle between the two USB connectors as a power source. And finally you got a small cutout in the housing, so you can attach a high security Kensington lock. Ok, time to look a little closer at the specifications. The UR22 Mark II has a sampling rate of 192kHz and a bit depth of 24-bit. And this makes sense because the UR22 uses a Cirrus Logic CS4270 AD-DA converter. The 192kHz enables you to record frequencies well above 20kHz, which is considered the upper end of the human hearing. And this is evident in the frequency response graph of the UR22. The frequency response is pretty much flat until it drops off in the higher frequencies with the minus a 3 dB point around 65 kHz. The bit depth of 24 bit theoretically enables a very high dynamic range and that's why I measured the exact amount of dynamic range to see how high it really is. The dynamic range of the Steinberg UR22 Mark II is 100.2 dBA weighted. That's a solid amount of dynamic range and with that amount you can leave yourself quite some headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. This voiceover is recorded with the UR22 and with the amount of dynamic range this interface provides it's absolutely no problem to record dialogue peaking around minus 18 dBFS and even a bit lower wouldn't be a problem. Of course, when I talk about noise, I have to mention the microphone preamp performance. To figure out the exact amount of noise the preamps create in the UR22, I measured the equivalent input noise. The EIN will quantify the preamp noise performance in a number, which is easily comparable to other devices. The Steinberg UR22 has an EIN of minus 123.3 dBU. When I measured this, I was a bit surprised, because this means that the preamps of the UR22 are a bit on the noisier side. 
Don't get me wrong here, it is still possible to get low noise recordings, especially with condenser mics, but in combination with low sensitive dynamic microphones, the noise created by the preamps might become audible. The reason I expected the preamp noise performance to be better is because other interfaces like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or even the Behringer UMC202 HD use lower noise preamps. As you can see, the UR22's preamps have about 5 decibels more noise than the 2i2 or 202 HD. Here is how this difference sounds like. All recordings were amplified by an equal amount in post, so you could clearly hear the noise, but other than that there was no additional processing done. I think we can all agree that the preamp noise performance of the UR22 is quite a bit worse than competing audio interfaces. I have to stress again that for audio recordings with condenser microphones, this is usually not a problem because you're limited by the noise performance of your mic anyways, but if you use dynamic microphones, the preamp performance can make a big difference in the perceived noise floor. Right now I'm recording my voice with a Shure SM57 dynamic microphone and I will be quiet to let you hear the noise floor of this setup. If you are wearing headphones, you should have heard just a slight amount of noise. In this exact setup it is still tolerable, but if I would move a little further away from the mic and use more gain, this noise flow will get audible. This leads me to the question I always get. Does the UR22 benefit from a cloud lifter or fathead? Well, this really depends on a few more factors, but simply talking about the preamp noise, I think the UR22 can very much benefit from an inline preamp, and if you for example use a fathead with the UR22, the preamp noise can be reduced by as much as 7 decibels. So if you're using a dynamic mic with the UR22 and experience some preamp noise, a fathead or cloud lifter can help. The gain an audio interface provides is important, because if it is too low, you cannot amplify low sensitive dynamic mics sufficiently. The UR22 has a total system amplification of 49.2 dBFS at 0 dBU, and that's a very typical value for an audio interface, and enough gain to drive most dynamic microphones just fine. One more thing I checked is the microphone input impedance. If this impedance is too low, it can affect the sound of your microphone. In the datasheet of the UR22, the impedance is stated with 4 kilo ohms, and I measured pretty much exactly 4K as well. That's totally fine, and actually even a bit higher than other interfaces, which are usually around 3K, which I would consider to be a good thing. And lastly, I did check the maximum input level, and the UR22 can record professional and consumer line level, as well as instrument and mic level. So no complaints here. Lately I have started testing the round trip latency of audio interfaces, and I did also measure the RTL for the Steinberg. The round trip latency is the amount of time it takes the interface to put out a signal and then record it again. So the RTL is a combined measurement of the output and input latency. Latency can play a big role when you are trying to monitor audio from your door in real time. On my Windows 10 machine I could reach an RTL as low as 5.7 milliseconds at a sample rate of 48 kHz with the lowest buffer size of 32 samples. I quickly want to point out that with the exact same sample rate and buffer size, the Windows driver will yield in a latency more than double of that of the ASIO driver. And the RTL times with the Windows driver in this specific test setup did also fluctuate between 40 and 50 milliseconds, whereas the ASIO driver RTL times were very consistent. So if low latency is critical, make sure you use the ASIO driver. Of course, the RTL you get is heavily dependent on the sample rate and buffer size, and which settings you end up using can also depend on the PC the interface is connected to. So take these numbers with a grain of salt, but I wanted to show the performance with my particular system, and this should still give you a general idea of what's possible with the UR22 Mark II. Let me shortly talk about my experience using this interface. The first thing I did is to install the firmware update from Steinberg, and this was just a few clicks and went without a problem. The UR22 is also USB audio class compliant, 
and I'm pretty sure that's the reason why it works with Windows 10 even without a driver installed. After I installed the Yamaha Steinberg USB driver, I could also use the ASIO driver class in my recording software. I could then open the UR22's settings in a separate window and easily change things like buffer size and sample rate. And so far the UR22 Mark II has been working flawlessly for me under Windows 10. I have to stress that I could only use the UR22 a few times in the past weeks and this is definitely not a long time experience. So what do I think about the Steinberg UR22 Mark II? Well, I think the build quality is really good, the interface is completely out of metal and it feels like it is built to last. It is also nice to see that the UR22 offers a MIDI in and output and it is compatible with iPads. The sample rate of 192kHz ensures a flat frequency response beyond the human hearing range and the 24-bit makes sure that the interface provides a nice amount of dynamic range. One thing I wasn't impressed by is the noise performance of the microphone preamps in the UR22. I mean it's not terrible and you can still use dynamic microphones, but if you use very low sensitive dynamic mics and you need ultra low noise preamps, then this might not be the interface for you. For all the people who mainly use condenser mics, the preamp performance is sufficient because you're most likely going to be limited by the noise performance of your mic anyways. So all in all I still think that the Steinberg UR22 Mark II is a decent audio interface, only the preamp noise performance is not as good as I expected it to be. Ok, I hope you liked this more detailed look at this audio interface, if so please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more audio gear reviews. I will see you all in the next one.